but I had to get to the end of myself. I had to decide I was done. And when I did, I opened up my arms and I said, Jesus, I'm done. Take over, please take over my heart, mind, and spirit and help me. And he hasn't stopped since that very moment. I remember it to this day. And it was 26 years ago. And I, I look back at this journey and it brings tears to my eyes of joy because I, I'm so grateful that he took every single horrible, icky thing I've ever gone through and he's turned it for good. I am Lisa Roars, former executive coach turned podcaster and digital course creator. Just a few years ago, my typically unwavering optimism was put to the test when my autoimmune system went sideways and handcuffed my dreams to positively impact the world. Fast forward though, through years of failed experiments, dozens of doctors and countless hours of research, and I am now a healthy, thriving CEO of a business that is positively impacting the world by empowering people to exchange fear for fortitude and dis-ease for durability. I created the Sunshine Cafe podcast to give you strategies to be your best self-advocate so you can focus on the things which light you up. If you're looking for hope and encouragement to live a life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome back to the Sunshine Cafe. I'm Lisa Roars, your host, and today I have a good friend of mine with us as our guest. Dr. Christine Stevey is a mom, a wife, and a licensed doctor of pastoral science and medicine. She's also a doctor of philosophy in natural and biblical medicine and board certified in integrative medicine with a focus on neuroscience and trauma recovery. Dr. Christine has a passion to help her clients get to the root cause of their health challenges, and she does this at her clinic in Minnesota called Santa Wellness Center. At her clinic, she offers neurointegrative and metabolic assessment, stress reduction therapy, herbology, trauma recovery, homeopathy, detoxification, craniosacral therapy, integrated applied kinesiology, functional endocrinology, bioterrain analogies, and a whole bunch of other things I can't even pronounce. <laughs> Dr. Stevie has a deep passion to see men, women, and children of all ages and athletic ability walk in optimal health emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. In addition to her serving her family and her clients, Dr. Stevie is frequently called on to lecture at universities, public and private schools, churches, and corporations. Dr. Stevie's book called Dust to Diamonds is one of two, and it offers a wealth of encouragement for anyone going through hard times who's needing resources to help them weather the storm and thrive on the other side. In addition to all that Dr. Stevie's already done and accomplished, She's currently overseeing a huge expansion of her clinic into a 47-acre treatment facility for people of all ages to heal using the most effective modalities wrapped in biblical truth and built on the foundational power of the Creator God's nature to heal and restore. Dr. Christine Stevie is making a difference in the lives of her clients every single day, and I think she's going to make a difference in yours too. So let's dive in. Well, good morning and welcome to the show and good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you're listening from today. I am here with a force to be reckoned with in the realm of healing and things that are going wrong with our bodies. And she is just a delightful soul. You guys are going to be so excited and, and encouraged to hear from my friend, Dr. Christine Stevie. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lisa. Such an honor to be here with you and all of the listeners. I feel honored and blessed to be here and I can't wait to share. Perfect. Well, Dr. Stevie is one of those souls that, you know, we all meet people throughout our lives in different pathways. And you were one of those for me that I just completely had this draw to and just a connection with early on. And I feel like I've known you for decades longer than I have, but it's just been wonderful. And I am excited. I'm so excited to share the things that you are doing with your business and your mm -hmm. practice and help our listeners hear a little bit from the encouragement side of your amazing journey. So let's let's start there. We heard a little bit about your bio already, but let's start with how you got to where you are now and what kinds of things brought you to become the amazing doctor that you are today. Well, Lisa, I love sharing the story uh, and starting out this way. I I was a mom of of um, three boys, a single mom, and at the time, I was uh, protected by God in a very bad domestic violence situation. Um, moved out to the Midwest to just get a new start for a start with my boys. 
uh, had a two and a half, four and seven. Mm-hmm. And they were, of course, the only thing I lived for at the time. And I, I didn't really know the Lord very well at that point in my life. But I just knew that my life was very stressful and my children were not doing well. I was not emotionally in a good place. The divorce was very, very difficult and across state lines. So it was stressful. It was um, uh, just, I was, I was filled with anger and just a lot of emotion I couldn't really deal with properly. And my sons too, tried to be emotionally available as a single mom for my kids. But my third son, Ryan, he, he really struggled more than the other two. And as the youngest one, he went through an awful lot of trauma too when he was at the ages of two to four. And in that stage of brain development, I now know, what I didn't know then, how much that impacts a child's ability to develop. Mm. Pure, feeling loved, you know, grounded uh, with joy. And my son did not know that when he grew up. So it, it started to cause me to pursue other avenues because when I came out here to where I live now in Minnesota, there weren't any options offered to me other than medical pharmaceutical drugs, things like that, that I had researched and knew that was not going to be an option I would be able to choose for my little guy. And I started to pursue other options. I started praying and asking the Lord to show me the way. And he did. He, he lit the path mm. and continues to do it. I have grown so near and tight to the Lord out of just sheer desperation and need. And I, I'm so glad because when I look back at it, do, would I have ever wanted to go through that journey? No. But when I look back now on how God has used it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I encourage people that are listening that are in a desperate situation or grieving or dealing with loss of any kind or even dangerous situations, the Lord will always rescue. He will always come to us and he will always answer our prayers when we are seeking his face and his wisdom. And as he lit the path, it became clear every step of the way that he was using things, people, the word of God all these things in my path to start healing him. And he hasn't stopped healing. Mm-hmm. He's 20 years old now and a man of God that I adore. And he is so excited to help me on this journey, as well as our sons, to start our institute and to kind of move this forward, to start changing and making a national or global impact on children in this generation to help them heal God's way. Which w- what I mean by that is taking the word of God and applying it on every level to the healing. Because unfortunately, Our medical system right now has taken God and the word of God predominantly out of the process. Hmm. And when that happened, and I learned very early on in my studying years, when I started going back to school to get my doctorate, the history was stunning uh, and very revealing. And I was not expecting it. Hmm. I was not expecting to learn what I learned about the foundation of what we have now and what we call our medical system. And so as I continued to pursue that, God kept opening up the doors to where he wanted me to go. He'd show me what not to do, and then he'd show me what to do. And he would affirm it. I would pray and fast about things. I would seek him in his word continuously and seek counsel of godly people he put in my life. And he, he continued to actually give me peace. I knew when I was going in the right direction, I'd have peace about each step of the way. And if I didn't have peace, I wouldn't pursue it till I did. And so for Ryan, it was a combination of first and foremost, praying off any of the fears and the stronghold patterns that the scriptures talk about. I'm aware of 18 strongholds in scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the resources I use in the clinic now. And when we started praying off these things and started really dealing with the spiritual warfare, that's real. And a lot of people Like, well, they're fearful to talk about it, but a lot of people aren't really aware of what that means and how the enemy operates. Well, the enemy operates in our health too. Mm -hmm. Um, Tries to do everything he can to destroy God's people. Mm -hmm. That's a real thing. Yeah, I think people are starting to see that more and more, don't you, with all that's going on in our world? People are starting to, even non-believers, feel there's something brewing around us. And that's the spiritual warfare you're referring to. Yes, Absolutely. And uh, as, as we continue down, it is, it's created it, a lot of the tools I use in the clinic today. Uh, the Lord laid on my heart about 20 years ago to build an institute, to build the first neuroscience institute of pastoral medicine, where it would be a sanctuary for healing for children, families, adopted kids, uh, children that have been in the foster care system, violated, now sex trafficked, all these different kinds of traumas 
and to, to have a place where they are safe to heal and where they meet Jesus because Jesus is the only healer. Amazing. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through him. But the whole part about healing is incredible because he's the only one that can truly heal someone's heart. He's the only one that can actually help your body, your brain, your mind, your heart resolve in his image why we go through these traumatic things in life. What does that mean? How can a good God let all these things happen to his people? Mm -hmm. And it's something I think every Christian needs to reconcile. We all have to fight with it. We all have to kind of go, what is this? How do I navigate this world, you know, and be a Christian? I mean, we'd all like to just focus on love and, and joy and peace and all the fruits of the Spirit. Of course we do. But it gets really challenging when you're called to do that in a world filled with so much evil. Mm -hmm. And when you're watching children suffer or people suffer here and around the world, it's not an easy thing to, to reconcile if you don't really know and are grounded and in, in really seeking the character of God. Because there's so many things out there now that are also challenging. Who is the character of God? What does that mean? Who is God? And people have a lot of really interesting things to say. I choose the character of God in the Bible and as my one and only truth source, because navigating this world right now is very difficult to tr discern truth from lies. Goodness gracious. I mean, social media alone is enough to just drive people nuts. Yeah. And that, that, is, that is just, I, I get a lot of questions from people about that. How how do you research? Where do I go? So I love giving people resources because I want them to investigate and learn for themselves, yeah. not my word for it. Because I had to walk this journey myself too, because God gave me different things unique to my journey. Mm -hmm. And he will give things unique to each journey. And that's the beauty of it. It's such a blessing to walk out a healing process with God at the helm and not man. Mm -hmm. Because you can't go wrong that way. Yeah, You just can't. And even though the journey might be difficult, might take longer than we want, it's not a quick pill fix kind of a situation. The blessings are far beyond what you could think or imagine as you walk through it because you're drawing near to God and you're learning so much in the process mm -hmm. about who you are in him and who he is. And, and I, that's permanent. probably the thing. Yeah. What's that? And the healing's permanent, like you said. It absolutely of being this permanent. This yeah. take a pill for a while and you're good for a short time and then you got to take a pill again. And uh, exactly. this is like a permanent changing of your mind, your emotions, your spiritual connections and your body. Correct. Because when your mind and your heart, when the front brain, the back brain and your heart are all connected and in alignment with God's truth, your body has no choice but to heal. It's designed by God to heal. Mm -hmm. Then all of these other extraneous things that are creating chaos for the body, they get removed. Because now you have a foundation that is solid. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to deal with whatever irrational or unhealthy fear is tied to this particular scenario. And once we actually bring the word of God, the foundational truth, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. 1 John four eighteen, his perfect love casts out all fear. When you start bringing those things into it and you start to say them and choose them, that is the power of the word of God manifest. In those words, it goes forth and it accomplishes exactly what he set it out to do. Yeah. Well, when you bring that into the mix, when you start bringing that in as the foundation of someone's healing journey, that is a game changer, absolute game changer, because now all things that are in alignment are in alignment with that truth. And I think that's really where the healing starts. Yeah, for sure. And I see it every day. I, I truly do. It's, it's the most amazing thing. And it brings me so much joy to be able to serve the Lord this way because I get to watch him heal people. I think we all would agree, those of us who are Christians and understand what Jesus did when he was here on earth, don't, we all kind of wish we were just there. Like if we could have just been there. And right. you, are, you are bringing that word back to life and back to joining it with that healing journey and really bringing that experience back to life by taking those two pieces, the healing journey, God's word, and joining them together. And that's awesome. Well, thank you. I, and I see myself, I see my job truly as just holding people's hands and drawing them right to Jesus in the truth because yeah. I cannot heal people. He can use me as a tool and a vessel. And there are things sometimes he'll show me, sometimes I'll feel things. Uh, it's like, it's like anybody using their gifts, yeah. you know, in, in the body of Christ. But I know that it, my gifts need to edify the church. They need to edify God, not me. And so therefore, my job is to be a helper, you know, it's to come alongside people 
and guide, but not to proclaim that I'm the healer. And I think that's a big distinction that needs to be made, especially in these times that we're in, because there's a lot of misinformation and chaotic deceit mm-hmm. things out there. And it's designed that way on purpose. And, yeah. and I spend a lot of time prayer, fasting, journaling, and writing on the things that actually keep me grounded in the word of God and what that means and what that looks like and understanding more about his character, drinking more deeply of his spirit every day. Mm-hmm. So a couple of the resources I absolutely love are Dr. Carolyn Leaf's research. She's a Christian neuroscientist. If nobody's heard of her, oh, please do look her up. And her latest book, How to Help Your Children Clean Up Their Mental Mess, is fantastic. I recommend it highly. Uh, it's just as good for adults as it is for the kids. And uh, looking up things like uh, German New Medicine, now we're talking about a, a German physician who's not a Christian, but when God brought those resources into my path in 2007, it was both of them at the same time, mm-hmm. both saying the same thing from two different viewpoints, two different worldview points. But I paid attention because that's something you don't find very often. And certainly when stuff comes in my path, when it just kind of rolls across my, whatever you want to call it, you know that God might be answering a prayer. Yeah. And I'm really going to investigate that. And that's how he's answered a lot of my prayers is yeah. he'll bring things into my path that I wouldn't have expected and I wouldn't have even known to look for. And yeah. so I pray that for each and every person I actually work with. That God, yeah. will show God uses all kinds of resources, even ones that are not believers. I, I mean, we know that we have so many examples in the Bible. And I, I want to back up just a little bit to what you said, because I think it's just really key for people to realize you talked about truth being in the Bible and being really the only basis for truth. And I would imagine, you can correct me here if I'm wrong, but I'd imagine a lot of your work when you start working with new patients is clarifying the lies and the the things that they thought were truth. Because evil has a crazy way of introducing a little slice of truth surrounded by a whole lot of deception, which makes us believe it's true. It's a very slippery slope because your brain recognizes some things that are true. And then so then you assume the whole message is true. And so- I love that you are giving people resources to learn for themselves. Mm -hmm. God invites us to ask questions, you know, with Jesus saying to Thomas, doubting Thomas, here are my, here are my wounds. Put your fingers in my wounds. He didn't reprimand Thomas for having questions. He invited him to study it and dig into it. So really good. That's a brilliant comment you made there. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of it because the example that I use most often is one of the things that the enemy uses most to destroy God's people, which is fear. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and here's how I understand it, and I've lived it, is that fear is a natural thing we're all going to feel. The question is, are we going to hold Jesus' hand and have him help us deal with that fear appropriately? Or are we going to elevate the fear above his truth? Mm-hmm. And that's where we start to get in trouble, and that's where we open up the door for deceit. Right. And that is what I find first and foremost, because people come to me littered, riddled with anxiety, sleeping disorders, all kinds of autoimmune. The main reason the body will attack, which is what autoimmune is, your immune system gets confused and then it starts attacking you. The reason that happens is because something that is not true or something that's a negative force is being elevated above the truth. Mm-hmm. And that is the root. It's not to dismiss the physical symptoms. It's not to dismiss the feelings that people have in any way, shape, or form. It's to help them resolve and come to truth with those feelings and, and to, to bring God's word to that because nothing is going to be more powerful than God's word. And when that word is applied to it, the fear is conquered. The fear is crushed. And I'm living proof of that. I lived my whole first 35 years of life in all-consuming, debilitating fear. Mm-hmm. That's how I grew up. And that was riddled up my bloodline. Well, the first thing that happens then when you grow up in fear about everything is that that opens up the door for things like the spirit of Jezebel. I got to control my environment. I've got to control the people around me. I've got fear and now I've got to control. Well, then you realize you can't control anything. Life is going to give you these, you know, however you want to call it, dish you out, whatever. God's going to allow things happen in your life that you can't control. So that's a lie. Here comes the deception. I can't control anything. Yeah. And my only safe place then is that God controls everything. And if he is a good, good father all the time, which is who he is, that's what helped me. It drove me. Like I, I borderline obsessed 
And I, if I'm going to be obsessed about something, I want to be obsessed about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So I got obsessed about, okay, what does this mean? And how do I get free from the fear and the need to control and this, this deep uh, sense of joylessness or lack of peace? I can't, how am I going to heal if I'm going to stay in that state? Mm -hmm. So here I'm talking about myself specifically. My journey has been very difficult uh, from being abused from when I was little by my father, then getting raped at 15, going into one abusive relationship after another. I'm blessed to have three boys at that point in time, but not in any way, condition, form or other, being the mom I wanted to be. Equipped, yeah. Uh, totally ill-equipped and going, now what do I do? But I had to get to the end of myself. I had to decide I was done. And right. when I did, I opened up my arms and I said, Jesus, I'm done. Take over, please. Please mm -hmm. take my life. Please take over my heart, mind, and spirit and help me. And he hasn't stopped since that very moment. I remember it to this day. And it was 26 years ago. And I, I look back at this journey and it brings tears to my eyes of joy because I, I'm so grateful that he took every single horrible, icky thing I've ever gone through and he's turned it for good. And he continues to turn it for good because that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's how we reconcile these horrible things that happen in life. Right. Because if we didn't go through these trials, how could we relate to anyone that needs that help or that encouragement or that love or that peace or to understand that Jesus is the answer to that? I'm not the answer to it. He is. But I can certainly attest to it. And he's definitely given me a voice and I can get loud at times so I can speak and scream from the mountaintop. <laughs> I've, learned, I've learned to like uh, take the negative part of that and that passion <laughs> and not have it come with a with a side of anger but if I can if I can speak with passion I can't think of anything better to speak passionate about than how Jesus has moved in my life and how I watch him heal heal my sons heal me I had cancer in 2007 uh healed me with no chemo no radiation no surgery how he has healed Hashimoto's hypothyroid, adrenal burner out, sleeping disorder for 40 years. The list goes on. Wow. And so I'm just amazed. I'm in awe of how he does it. But the key isn't that I try to get it right. The key has always been that I would surrender and come to him and trust him and just sit and praise him and read his word and learn and just drink of him. He, mm. he is our living water. He truly is our life's breath. And I think that's the bulk of the healing. I really do. And when we are open to receive it. That's when we start to walk it out and we see these things manifest in ways we couldn't have even imagined. Yeah. So now my listeners know why I called you a force. <laughs> a force to be reckoned with. There is no way dis-ease is going to survive under your watch. I just love Amen that. Amen to that, sister. Amen. Uh, your passion and your drive to mm -hmm. bring people to that living water of healing space is just, I mean, you can almost, I can almost feel it through the Zoom call. It's just, you know, it's really exciting. And for those of you who can't see Dr. Stevie here on the other side, she is just radiating and it's beautiful. Oh. And I think we, we could probably talk for three or four hours. So we're, <laughs> so I'm yeah. going to have you back. <laughs> But there's so many things I'm taking notes here as you're talking, and you mentioned a couple of beautiful resources. We'll make sure those get into the show notes so people can look those up after the show. You talked about how fear is so often the root and mm -hmm. how healing the root is the, the most critical piece to resolve the health issue that's there. And it seems like, my goodness, with all God has brought you through, it seems like, you know, there's nothing more powerful than someone saying, looking at someone in the eye and hearing them say, I understand because I've been there. Yeah. I understand. And yeah. it feels like God has just put so many different hurdles in your path that you can very authentically now look right in the eye of your patients, 90% yep. probably of those situations and say, I truly understand where you're coming from. And that's such a, a trust building space to come from when someone can really understand they're working with someone who's been there, understands yeah. the pain and the frustration and the depression that comes from these different ailments that just layer of themselves on top of our lives. Right. Let's back up a little bit because, my goodness, I'm just thinking about a young woman, young mom who's got three beautiful boys who is hurt and has a bunch of emotional things you still needed to heal from. And yet you found the energy, the motivation, the wherewithal to go back and get 
your degrees, all the amazing degrees you had, plus the motivation to just use all these things for good. Was there like a pivot point or any turning point that you can remember that kind of ignited that journey to keep pressing on and not succumb to it? Yes, there is. I still see it in my mind. My three little boys were sitting on the stairs in my former home before I married my husband. I've been married to now for 24 years. They were looking at me. They were giggling and laughing. And I had just come out of the kitchen and was at the lowest point in my life and was contemplating just ending it all because I couldn't do it anymore. And I looked at them and it was as if God was standing right there next to me and said, who love them and take care of them if you don't? Yeah. And it absolutely pivoted me, whether that was an angel, whether that was the Lord himself. It didn't matter. That's what came to me. And that's what all consumed my thoughts. And I went, Lord, show me the way because I don't want to give up. Mm. I've recently given my testimony. How the Lord gave me to to speak it was that they loved my broken, battered heart back to purpose. And they did. And the love of a child, the love of God through my boys, I have no doubt in my mind that he has called me to raise four men of God Mm -hmm. and teach them and show them. And not only that, but you know, the spicy part of me, the not the, the flesh part of me is going to make sure that they treat the daughter-in-laws quite well. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. And do that through a biblical lens, because that is not my history. But why God gave me four boys, I often wondered because I grew up in a house of girls and I kept going, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. Why, why, why would you give me boys? And now I look back and it's redemption. He's given me four beautiful men in my life that actually are the antithesis and the opposite of all the men I was exposed to. What a blessing, right? So how God shows up for me in so many ways is he brings beautiful people into my life like you and I feel the same. The minute we met, the minute he brought that about, I was just, uh, and there's another divine one right there. And that is Jesus all over. And it, 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 it was so clear to me. And that's how he's blessed me beyond measure. Yeah. is through relationships, through people in my life, whether it be through my sons, whether it be through people he's connected me with, people that I have gone to school with or, 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 or mentored under or whatever. It doesn't matter. He's always blessed me in that way, which is so awesome because that means not only do I have those relationships now, but I have to, eternity to look forward to. Mm-hmm. So my brothers and sisters in Christ that God has put in my life. Yeah. Because the enemy's tried to use a lot of people in my life to destroy me. Yeah. And so I've, I've learned discernment. I, I'm learning more every day, but that would be the pivot point in my life was when I knew God was going to show me the way out. And I, I didn't have to ever have those thoughts again. I, I wanted to raise my beautiful boys and see the healing happen, yeah. but I'm glad he didn't tell me how difficult the journey would be ahead of time. <laughs> I would have ran. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind I would have ran. I'm not going to tell you my flesh is not weak as it is. Uh, yeah, no, that foresight. Uh, there's a very good reason God doesn't give us foresight uh, any more than he does. I love those four boys ended up being the generational break of yeah. the reoccurring abuse. We hear so often about how those abuses are generational. Hurting people hurt other people. Right. So what a beautiful gift that you were able to take that and instead of passing it on to them, break that generational stronghold and raise up four beautiful men of God. Right. And my sons have seen God move. I mean, I was married twice. And so I have one son by my first marriage. I have two sons by my second marriage. And my fourth son is by my husband. Now I've been married for 24 years once I became a Christian. And my husband has adopted all the boys. My oldest son actually carries the Stevie name. And it's interesting how the two middle ones, their biological father has been incarcerated and is incarcerated for 15 years. And that is, I mean, I always wondered why it didn't happen as a result of what I went through, but God's wrath and God's judgment and how he takes care of things, he promised me. I was, I stayed in Psalm 37 for months and months and months. And I'll never forget how he just told me, keep trusting me, trust me, I've got this. And it was painful because I had to allow my boys, I had to watch my boys hurt, get hurt over and over and over again, lied to. Um, and as a mama bear, you don't, you don't want your children to go through that. It was so painful for me, but he taught me that trusting him is the only way. Mm -hmm. And my boys watched that come full circle. Mm -hmm. 
So they know. I mean, it's more about experience, isn't it, than just words? It, the experiences speak so much more loudly than the words. And yet the word of God is so incredibly powerful. It's almost like that just gets set aside. And I find that a lot. That's where I get really passionate. It's like, no, no, no. Let me, let me explain to you how I understand this, you know, and why I say these things and why everything that we do in the clinic is based in the word of God, because I can't see anything manifesting for God's glory that doesn't start with that. Yeah. End with that and everything in the middle. Yeah, you know, exactly. Easiest way to say it. I love your pivot point, And I wrote this down, actually, who will care for them if you don't? Um, and I think the reason that resonates with me so much is because your pivot point also became what was propelling you. Because yeah. now you have almost that same theme. If mm -hmm. you don't care for them, who will? As you build this amazing new institute or expanding your institute, actually, because yeah. you have Santa Wellness Care which is a beautiful place where you're offering so many options for people who have hit a roadblock with Western medicine. So many healing modalities based in biblical truth. So let's talk a little bit about how that is propelling you to build this new institute and what that vision is that God gave you 20 years ago. Oh, Beth, it's, it's glorious. It, it, it can only come from him and it can only come by his hand. It's not a small project. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's something that's a God that vision. It doesn't do small, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> he just taught me to expand my dreams and that there is no limit, right? There's no ceiling on what God can do. And believing by faith in that, you know, it's just, it, it's been a, a really incredible journey so far. The Institute is to be a three-level facility where we will have the ability to address trauma on every level, whether it be from sports injuries, whether it be from children and, you know, horrific growing up situations, lots of trauma in the early childhood, uh, autoimmune and cancer and veterans. Every one of these groups of community have a thing in common. They've all gone through trauma, mm -hmm. but they've all gone through it uniquely in that kind of realm. And being a veteran or active military, trauma is very different than a child that's been brought up in the foster care system. At the end of the day, though, the brain sees it the same. And so I've continued to study and got my PhD in neuroscience and naturopathic medicine, then got a double PhD in biblical medicine because thank you, Lord, that I didn't end up going down that, you know, a route of separating it from the word of God because uh, the brain absolutely can heal. And that's why I love Dr. Carolyn's research so much because she proved it in, in, in her geodesic theory and a lot of the books that she's written, she proved it that not only does the word of God heal and that a brain can heal, that's why God tells us in the word to renew our mind in the word. You know, and find me a scripture. There's a lot of scriptures I don't understand still, but I trust that God will reveal them when they're supposed to be, you know, I'll understand deeply what they mean. But as I've gone through this journey, it's become clear that when you put God in the foundation back in and you give people options and you help them understand how much of this they have control over and they can choose, that's where their healing begins because then it's their individual, unique, beautiful, blessed journey with the Lord. And I want to create that space mm -hmm. and, um, and believe that God wants me to do that, to create a place where that can happen for children, infants, uh, geriatric, and everything in between. We will have an equine facility right next to the Institute. We'll have horse therapy, which is brilliant. Um, I, I just love how God's created those majestic animals and what their abilities are. Yeah. And to use them and to partner with them for helping children in particular, we are also looking to combine on a campus with United Christian Academy. So they want to build a school and they wanted me to join them on that same campus. So we have 47 acres in Lakeville and that has already started. We're actively trying to get the word out so that people can join us in providing this kind of space. I will have an endowment fund so that no children will be turned away from care. They can't afford care. We're going to build a, what I would call a Christian co-op. It's actually not going to be an insurance company. It's actually, <laughs> right, care the way actually Dang. described it in the Bible okay. with the first church. And to be able to have the nonprofits also have boards of godly people that then direct where all these resources go. And to bring on partners that are like-minded at the, at the Institute so that I can also have like acupuncture and chiropractic and the different things, the different modalities that God has helped heal me with. Mm -hmm. I want to provide as much as possible 
for people because not everybody walks the same path. Not everybody needs the same modality. Mm -hmm. And it's a continual learning journey to discern what it is. And I always depend on God to show me. I can have as many degrees as I want. And that's not going to change the fact that I don't know what's going to walk in my door that day. And I have no idea to help that person without God leading and his discernment. And that's why it takes a lot of the pressure off because it's not mine to own. It's mine to surrender. And it's mine to choose to serve the Lord and be a servant leader that would help guide. And that's how I see my role. You know, the degrees, the assessments that we do, the tools that we use, I think they have a purpose. They all serve a purpose and they all help people get from one point to another. And that keeps them unstuck. And then they can really truly experience what it means to get unstuck Jesus's way, which hallelujah to that, because, you know, when you're stuck, when you've lived it like I have and so many other people have, nobody wants to stay stuck in that. You know, at at some point you'll be scared. Yep. I don't know what's on the other side. So maybe this is better because it's familiar. I can promise you. Nope. 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 Don't stay stuck in that. You know, hold Jesus' hand, battle through the fear, proclaim the word of God, and move forward. It's really the only way. And it's the way we're going to survive through what we're dealing with now. Yeah. And you know what? With this institute and all the resources that you're making available to people, you are bringing the body of Christ around these people. So Mm -hmm. no, they don't have to have all the strength, but they do need to take some ownership to have the faith, to trust in God. And I love how you are giving them their power back. Yeah. You partner in the healing process. And I'll I'll contrast that with sometimes the Western medicine approach sometimes feels like the doctor dictates what I do and I don't have a say. Right. Uh, And that's not always the case. There's lots of amazing doctors out there in the Western world as well. But just to say that in your approach with really tying that the biblical approach to it, people can break those strongholds. They can have a whole community of like-minded people come around them and take their power back to use their faith to get unstuck. Right. Yeah. And and I love what you said too, that it's not about you, um, that you don't know what's going to walk in your clinic door from day to day. We don't know who might be listening to this right now, but whoever is listening, who feels that nudge in their heart that I have to reach out to Dr. Stevie because I think she can help me get unstuck. That's the person and God knows who that is. I don't even know who that might be. But right. it is getting unstuck via the word of God because God can break every stronghold, every That's single correct. one. That is correct. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How many acres again? 42? There's 47 acres. Many mm-hmm. acres. 47 acres of beauty and healing. That's amazing. And the goal is to have the facility here and then actually branch out and build a facility, like-minded facility in every state. Because I currently have people flying in from all over the country because they can't access care like this anywhere. Yeah. And I've had people like the word of mouth. I've never advertised. And so the word of mouth gets around. I mean, that's Jesus doing what Jesus does. And and I, he gets all the glory for that because I wouldn't have known how to do this. And I've been doing this for 22 years and it feels like, it feels like two. It just, it goes by with such, such, like, if you think time doesn't go by faster as you get older, well, let me, yeah, (laughs) I I can attest to that. Yeah. Uh, it does go by very quickly. And so the sense of urgency is always there to say, Lord, there's more people. There's more people and the vast territory that we need to take back for his kingdom and the revival that needs to happen in our nation and around the world. I feel like that might be the one small part I play. And I just trust him every day mm-hmm. to show me what that next step is. And I've learned that not knowing two days from now or five days from now is actually okay. Mm-hmm. Off, just let him do it, <laughs> you know, to stop as a recovering control freak. That's a really hard lesson to learn. Yeah. But getting free of that control stronghold that I had in my life just by default because of all the abuse I endured, that's a given. I've never seen someone go through trauma and not end up having some kind of a mechanism of trying to control. It's just an automatic thing of survival. Yes, self-preservation. And exactly. And God gives us that as a gift, Right. But at the same time, there's time where the integration needs to happen and the integration of being more one with Jesus. And in order to be more one with Jesus, we can't hold on to the past anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to let it go and we have to resolve it and bring it to truth. And I honestly believe that that is the key that's been missing for so many people. Mm -hmm. It was missing for me 
And and I, I continue to watch my boys little by little. They're all four different ice cream flavors, I call them. <laughs> I love them all with all of my heart. And they are so gifted men of God. And I and yet I look at it and go, they each have their very unique journey with the Lord too. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah, for sure. So I just say, Lord, show me how to love them and show me how to pray for them so that they can have even more of an experience with you than I have. And I know that's my first call. That's my first job to pray my sons into the kingdom and then go from there because we're not going to be here forever, right? And it's just a matter of, of doing what God's called us to do while we're here. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my gosh, there's so many different side roads I would love to take our conversation down. <laughs> um, I, I, lo I love what you're saying about releasing it to God. So many people have a difficult time letting go and trusting the unknown. I had a conversation the other day of someone, you know, um, those who can see me, I'm holding, gripping a pen really, really tightly. And this is sometimes how we take our cares to God. We say, here we go. And we're gripping it so tightly that he can't take any of that away from us until right. we open up our palm and let him take it from us freely. You are doing that with your patients and everybody that walks through your doors, teaching them how to release that yeah. stress and the things that are holding us into that stuck space. And I, I just love, love what you're doing there. Let's back up a little bit because one of the things we love to do at Sunshine Cafe is give people tools. And you've mm -hmm. mentioned a couple of times about fasting and praying. And we won't dive into too much of the detail about that because there's a lot of ways to fast and there's a lot right. of ways to pray and all that. But I am yep. curious about as a tool for hearing God and following his guidance, could you share with us a little bit about how that modality has helped you? Absolutely. That was one thing that drove me to understand and learn more about fasting was my son because the strongholds that we were dealing with, the stuff that I was watching my sons go through, and I would cry out to God because there was no one else that could help me anywhere. And he called me to my first fast and he made it very clear what he wanted it to be because he brought along my path shortly after I prayed for that knowledge and understanding, gave me that path. So I, I took that on and I was never more blessed in my life. I never felt better in my life. And I never really understood what it meant to bring discipline to my flesh until I did what he called me to do in a fast and how powerful that is. I'm still seeing the fruit of that fast 20 years later. And only God can do that. So I, I highly recommend it. I also know there are many varieties. There are physical issues that can hinder people. So fasting doesn't have to be food. It, and I really feel like a person needs to have peace with God about what to fast, when to fast, and how to fast. Yeah. I don't pro proclaim to be an expert at it. I just know that I, I'm getting better and better all the time at realizing that I just want God to lead me. Whatever it is that I'm supposed to do that he knows I need to do, guide me into that space. Because mm -hmm. I'm seeking his wisdom every day, his wisdom above all things. So when we do that and we seek his wisdom with the gifts without reproach, you know, abundantly, he just pours it out on us. That is what helps us to let go of the pen you were talking about, because that's one of the main reasons why so many people don't experience the power of fasting or the power of God's word or the power of prayer. It's not because they don't believe necessarily. It's because they have a hard time taking that step forward, trusting that God will meet them there. Yeah. And so that, that has made a huge impact in my life. I've done many different kinds of fasts throughout the years, and every single one of them had a specific purpose. And it was always out of my heart crying out, mm -hmm. God, to give me wisdom and understanding, direction, and discernment. Mm -hmm. And all he needed to do was tell me what were the keys to the power. You know what I mean? Like, show me what I got to do. I'll do it, you know? And it helped me break off the strongholds of food that I had. Yeah. I had many addictions to food. Um, you know, growing up with all of that, the one thing you can control is food. Yeah, and right. Food, and I can tell you this for sure. In 22 years, one of the hardest things to help people heal from is eating disorders because there are so many grips the enemy has on that. Well, and it's integrated oh. every single part of our lives it, and our it, celebrating. It's on absolutely. every corner. It's at every work event. It's everywhere. It is everywhere. It's in the schools. Let me reward the kids with with candy and, and yeah. stuff. That, you know, think you could they get suckers when they get their hair cut. They get I know. Thing. It's like yeah. it, it's everywhere. Yeah, it is very everywhere. And so getting disciplined to the flesh, I think, is huge. And again, that is also a, a foundational principle to healing. 
Yeah. And so I think that has been, uh, has absolutely been a main part of my healing journey for sure. Wonderful. Yeah, it is definitely not a, a popular topic when we consider our society. Nobody, nobody's celebrating, oh, hey, I didn't get something I wanted. We are right. typically celebrating how hard we worked to achieve something we wanted. Right. And it is a whole nother level of thinking. I love that. I wrote that down to bring discipline to my flesh. Yes. And so I know my, my flesh wants that latte. I'm not going to give it to them. Right. To me. I'm not going to give right, it right, to right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it wasn't because God wasn't going to let me have it in the future. Yeah. It's not because he wants to withhold the blessings. That's what the enemy wants us to believe. Right. Father of Lies is just going to yip in the ear all the time. It's because he wanted to teach me that right now, in order for my body to heal, I needed to remove those things that were toxic mm -hmm. and in my body the things that he created to wow. help me heal and teach me what and how to experience that healing through doing that. But it's trusting him. It was actually say, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I know I can say it. You're going to have to help me do it. Exactly. And giving that individual the power to say, I control when I'm going to eat and what I'm going to eat. And the food is not going to control me. And I think that's a huge mind shift for a lot of people who have used food as some type of a pacifier. Oh, for sure. And for people that have OCD or any other kinds of anxieties, the, the thing I help people with is, look, how about taking control of the positive narrative? Mm. How about mm. let go of the negative narrative and take control of the positive one? If you want to control, I'm all about that. Control the right things. Yeah. Yes. And that stops them dead in their tracks, typically, because someone who's suffering with OCD or anxiety or eating disorders, it's like, what, wait a minute, there's another side to this whole thing. Because you cannot see the force through the trees. You just can't. Right. When your mind is stuck in all of that, we have to create a new neural pathway in the brain physically. Yeah. And how to do that is starts with a choice. Yeah. And it starts with God gave us free will to choose. Exactly. And he did that for a reason. Because yeah. then our love is real. Yeah. You know, just like we're supposed to know his love is real. And, and we can know that by knowing him. Oh, my goodness. There's so many beautiful truths in this. I just love this. I, the whole bringing my discipline in my flesh and we have peace with God for the what, when and how. There's so many things about this, Dr. Stevie, that I could just, like I said a few minutes ago, we could just go down so many different side pathways. For those of you who are watching us, we had a, a little bit of a technology blip. So now Christine's got a different angle. But yeah, it's all good. Nothing can stop the power of God from getting out. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's try to land the plane, I guess, here a little for you and get you back to your day. I so appreciate you. So I so appreciate your time today. And, but before we go, I just want to make sure that people know if they want to support the Institute that you're building for this amazing future, if they want to just be a patient or how do people find you, my friend? Um, well, the best thing to do is to go to our website. There's two separate websites. We have www.sanowc.com. And then we also have www.nsipm.org. Okay. And there's a, it, it's right on the prominent part of the page. And you can donate now or light the way. Help us getting the word out for people to partner with us in prayer, in resources, time, money, whatever it is that God lays on their heart. Uh, but that is the best and, and easiest way. And if they have any trouble with that, to contact my office and that's Santa Wellness Center. And we are in Lakeville. And the number for the office is 952-681-2916. Beautiful. I'll make sure all of that's in the show notes so people can see it if they didn't get a chance to write that down. And we'll make that's sure all that's there for people because we want to give people resources for healing. We want to give them resources for encouragement. And I Maybe. hope all of you listening today will look up Dr. Stevie and see all the amazing things that are happening there. And if you know of anybody who's looking for a modality for healing and they mm -hmm. haven't been able to get unstuck, she is a great, great place to start. And, and the book that I wrote, Dust to Diamonds, is one of two. And that first book was to encourage people as they're going through really difficult situations and may not feel like they have resources. So that is also available on our website. And believe it or not, I actually have a Self-Defense for Women DVD in there too. So <laughs> I produced oh. years ago. So Wonderful. yeah, that's some other stuff that's in that, you know, that God used to heal. Me, yeah. You know, we're back and getting a black belt was one of the, one of the biggest joys in my life because I never thought I could do such a thing. So it was, it's been super fun. And I love teaching self-defense and I love doing kickboxing and awesome. such a healing thing. It's yeah. better than therapy on yeah. every level. It is a therapy for sure. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Yeah. So a force to be reckoned with both spiritually and physically. Look out. <laughs> here she comes. What a blessing you have been for, for me and for I know all of our listeners. Thank you for your time and for being with us this morning. And I just so cherish the relationship that God has given us. So thank you for your friendship. Thank you. It's uh, you as well. It's an honor and a pleasure. Love it. Right. Great. Thanks, Dr. So Steely. Good. Have a great thank day. You. Have a good day. You too. Wow, lots of great takeaways here with my conversation with Dr. Stevie, and I'll summarize a few key points here. Number one, I can't even tell you guys how many times I've interviewed people who have gone through really hard things, like the hardest, toughest storms, and they leaned into God to pull them through. They almost never say they wish it wouldn't have happened. While they wouldn't have chosen it, they wouldn't exchange it for anything because of the person they have become by going through those hard things. So my friend, there's encouragement there wherever and whatever you're going through right now. Lean into God and let him guide you. He'll turn your dust into dime. Number two, so many people ask, how can a good God let all these bad things happen to people? <laughs> and it's truly something that every Christian really does need to reconcile and work out. As a Christian or as people in general, we'd all just love to focus on love, joy, and peace. But the world is filled with a lot of evil. Hard things happen. And in order to understand what's happening around us, we've got to be fully grounded in seeking the character of God to answer the question of why God can let bad things happen to good people. God will accomplish what he needs to because his focus is eternal. While you and I worry about today, next week, and maybe what we're going to do in a year, God's focus is on eternal restoration and salvation. Number three, stay alert. And remember that truth is kind of a slippery thing. People are fallible, myself included. And our brains will often recognize a fact that is highly recognized as true. But then, as kind of a time saver, we just assume that everything wrapped around that truth is also true. Please, please do your research, my friend. Own the things that you believe and know what you believe and why. 1 Peter 3.15 tells us to always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this in gentleness and respect. God invites us to ask questions, my friend. So. Dig into it. Ask and ask and ask again until your questions and doubts are fully satisfied. Number four, one of the things that the enemy often uses to destroy people is fear. Fear is a natural thing and we all are going to feel fear. The question is, are we going to hold Jesus's hand and have him help us deal with that fear appropriately? Or are we going to elevate that fear above his truth? That's where we start to get into trouble. Timothy 1.7 reminds us that we are not given a spirit of timidity, but we're given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Remember that truth. Number five, to heal, you need to get to the end of yourself and decide you are done. When you get there, you can just open up your arms and say, Jesus, I'm done. Take over, please, please take over. Take my life, my heart, my spirit, my mind. The Lord himself will go be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will take every single horrible, icky thing you've ever gone through and use it for good and turn it into good. The key is that you do not have to get it right. The key is that you just have to surrender and trust him. Come near to God, he'll come near to you. Number six, trust God every day. Trust him to show you what the next step is and remember that not knowing for a couple of days, five days, a week, a year, that's actually okay. You'll be better off not knowing. Just let God do it, stay in the present. So many of us are, myself included, are recovery control freaks. So I really do understand that this is a hard lesson to learn, but be in the moment and let go of the things you can't control. Number seven, one of the main reasons why so many people don't experience the power of fasting or the power of God's word or the power of prayer is because they don't believe and they don't trust that God will meet them there. So lean into God and trust that God will meet you there. Number eight, self-control is learned. Self-discipline is learned and it's exciting actually to know that you have power and truly understanding what it means to bring discipline to your flesh, well, that's a game changer. Fasting is one thing that can really ignite change, but only God can break the strongholds of our flesh. There are many varieties of fasting to choose from, so even if you have physical issues against fasting in its truest form, it's not off the table for you, my friend. Fasting is always an option. It just depends what kind of fasting God is calling you to do. Hey, thanks for listening today. And if you enjoyed the episode, please share it. And you know, I have to tell you, some of you have posted the nicest, most encouraging comments for me. So while I love to be here to be an encouragement for you, 
Your comments and the reviews that you've put on my podcast have really been an encouragement to me. I read every single one of them. So please do take a moment to write a review right here wherever you're listening or watching, and that will be an encouragement for me. Finally, stay tuned for more information about my next round of Fast, Pray, Heal. In this digital course, we're going to learn about the ancient tools of fasting in its various forms and get prepared to do a guided fast together, supporting each other to find breakthroughs we never realized were possible. Oh, what an adventure. For more information and to sign up for the waiting list of the course, head over to my website at lisaroars.com. Thanks again for listening, everyone. God bless you. Make it a great week.